Good morning. Today on Spotlight, the drive to increase minority entrepreneurship in the city of Detroit and elsewhere. Our focus this morning is on a unique and new partnership between Delta Dental of Michigan, Ohio and Indiana and Cincinnati-based Lightship Capital Investment Fund. Our guest, Candace Matthews Bracken, general partner at Lightship Capital and Margaret Trimmer, vice president of strategic partnerships at Delta Dental. They'll share their vision for the future of the Motor City. It's Sunday, October the 25th. I'm Chuck Stokes and this is Spotlight. Margaret Trimmer and Candace Matthews Bracken, welcome to Spotlight. Thanks for having us. It's, Thanks, Chuck. It's good seeing both of you again. Uh, let me start. Interesting partnership, $1.8 million at stake here. A partnership between Delta Dental and your individual company. Candace, um, first of all, how did the two of you meet and how did this all come together? Margaret? Um, well, we have a subsidiary, Chuck, called the 4100 Group. And that subsidiary is designed to help diversify Delta Dental's portfolio of businesses. And the lead um, within that company was looking for opportunities to um, have a larger footprint in the inclusion arena and to get more involved in diverse business partnerships. Mm -hmm. And found he found Lightship Capital and they really stood out as a VC fund that is minority focused and that is Midwest focused. And it touches all three of our states, Delta Dental of Michigan, Ohio, and Indiana. And as you know, Chuck, we do business with the best. And Candace and Brian are truly the best at what they do. Very good. Uh, Candace Matthews Bragan, um, every time I see your name, I see at least three different companies in names. So try to help me understand what's what. I see Lightship, I see Hillman, um, I see talk about a boot camp, new MEA boot camp. Uh, start me at the beginning and walk me through. Certainly. So about three years ago, I noticed that there was a huge need uh, within my local tech ecosystem to support women and minority led tech companies. Uh, so I came up with an idea to launch an accelerator specifically focused on women and minorities in tech here in Cincinnati, uh, and it's called Hillman Accelerator. So for the last three years, we've offered that 12 week program. Uh, and then last year, I acquired another brand called New Me. Uh, it's a boot camp program that's been around since 2011, where you bring in entrepreneurs from all over the country uh, and spend one week really taking a deep dive into those organizations. So over the last nine years, 2,000 entrepreneurs have been trained in that program. Uh, and really what I felt was those things make a huge impact here um, in, my, in my region and across the country, but it wasn't a large enough impact. Uh, and so together with my other general partner and also my spouse, Brian Breckin, uh, we launched Lightship Capital, which is a fund that specifically supports BIPOC women, LGBTQIP founders, and the disabled here in the Midwest. Sure, we'll drill down on that a little more later. Uh, talk to me from your perspective about this partnership with Delta Dental. What attracted you to them? And you're in Cincinnati. Uh, Candace is, I mean, uh, Margaret is in Detroit. She's also in Indiana and Ohio and a few other states as well, um, but based here. You know, really what's most interesting is, um, you know, how they get involved in the community and the, the really like immediate touch that they put upon us. So when we talked to them, um, they were looking at us as a way to diversify their portfolio and they saw a real market opportunity there, not as a way of charity, but as a way of actually making a huge difference in communities. Um, you know, as a diverse fund manager, there are less than oh my goodness, um, less than 20 black women in the country doing what I do at the scale that I'm at. And they saw me as someone that they could get a return on investment in, but also make an impact in the community. So they took us seriously. And, and many people in this industry don't take um, black women and black GPs seriously. Mm -hmm. Um, I want both of you to comment on this. I'll start with you, Margaret, and then I'll work my way over to Candace talking about it. Um, 
every time we're talking about investment firms and funders, um, it seems to be East Coast and West Coast and not as much talk about the Midwest. Why is that and is that perception correct and are you trying to correct that? Well, Chuck, I'll, I'll, I'll address that by simply saying, look around Detroit, what do you see? I see the same thing, unbelievable entrepreneurial energy, hungry for investment and support. And so I think that from Candace and Brian's perspective, the Midwest is an untapped reservoir of talent, of opportunity, of um, investment opportunity. Really, there's a lot of money to be made in this region. And you know, our pillars of investment, building healthy, smart, vibrant communities, you've got to build wealth to create those kinds of communities. And we have to not just, you know, the old Bible story, give a man a fish, teach a man to fish. Well, okay, we need to do both of those things. We are all about taking care of basic needs, taking care of education, but capital is how you get a man a boat. So a man, a woman, a person on the, the LGBTQ plus spectrum, disabled folks, they can go out and fish in the deep water and really participate in the mainstream economy. So that's how we look at this investment, building wealth. Can the same question. You know, I'm from a little scrappy town, just 40 minutes south of Detroit. So I'm from Toledo um, and I see um, my city in Detroit. And, you know, Cincinnati is a, is a similar thing. So as, I, as I've grown what I've done, we've, we've been looking for a city that is similar to ours, um, but has a different set of assets. So here locally, we have PNG and we have Kroger. Oh my goodness. I could go on and on with the list of opportunities throughout the state of Michigan. And you are in Detroit, a city of makers. And so that's what the opportunity is. It's to the ability to work with makers and doers and people who are scrappy um, that are willing to be able to do the work that it takes but also are hungry for another opportunity. And so, I don't know, I, I'm ready to be a, uh, I'm ready to work in, the, in this new pond. I'm really, really excited about it. So, so essentially what you're both saying is, we're really an untapped resource here that people have not, uh, I don't wanna say exploited, but they have not gone in and said, okay, let's, let's get some gold out of this, this untapped resource. Yeah, there, there are a few. Absolutely, that are there and doing great work. Um, so there are other great venture firms like Detroit Venture Partners or Ludlow, but there just has to be more. If you look at the coast, there are tons of venture firms uh, and we just need more capital for entrepreneurs to be able to tap. All right, we're gonna take a little break. We'll hurry right back with some more questions. Stay with us. And welcome back. Uh, Margaret, you have also a subsidiary of Delta Dental involved in this. Explain that. Um, the 4100 Group it has been together almost two years now. And really, that's a, a company that is designed to scout the region for investment opportunities for Delta Dental to diversify our business portfolio. We are first and foremost a dental benefits company, right? We provide dental plans to lots and lots of businesses in our three states, um, but that's not the only thing we are. We're a tech company. We're a financial services company. We have all those kinds of services. We are beginning to create secondary businesses around. Um, we bought a tech company a few years ago, DuPoint. We created a financial services company called Red Cedar Investment Management. We believe diversity, as we've seen in the economy in general, is really important to long-term financial sustainability. Ms. Bracken, um, I read recently in one of the articles about you that only 1% of U.S. venture-backed funds have black founders. Is that correct? Yeah, less than 1% of all venture capital goes to a black-led company, 0.2% to one led by a black woman. And, so and why, why is, excuse me, didn't mean to interrupt, but, but why is that? Does, is this uh, part of what we have been hearing all along throughout this very heated election about systemic racism and 
um, how it works its way not just into law enforcement but also into corporate America and people don't know how to deal with diversity and inclusion? Yeah, I think that is a way to draw a conclusion here. Um, unfortunately, um, bias hits boardrooms, bias hits investment committees, bias hits the um, selection process when choosing um, LPs or members of a firm. And so um, unfortunately, until we diversify the actual management of funds and the decision making um, mechanisms, we, we won't see a change at all. So you know, this is a $50 million fund that I'm in the middle of raising. Uh, and I have the, the largest first time fund ever raised by a black woman in the United States. Would it be safe to say that what you're doing, you're not waiting for Silicon Valley to come in and save um, minority entrepreneurship. You're going out and making it happen yourself. I'm out doing it myself, but I'm also out looking for some of the, the greatest LPs to, to join us in this journey. So we have found our allies in our investors, um, and I would not be able to do it without them. Yeah. Uh, Margaret, Delta Dental has always been involved in the community. Do you see this as the next step? And 10 years from now, what do you hope a partnership like this yields for the city of Detroit, Delta Dental, and also for Lightship? Well, if you think about it, Chuck, again, going back to our pillars, healthy, smart, vibrant communities, that's what we believe is our purpose. Our mission is to build communities where our customers and partners can succeed, right? And those need to be economically strong places. And so when we invest in those who can build wealth, and when we take into consideration those underserved and underestimated, and underestimated is a really powerful word here. It's not just, oh, poor communities, it's that we haven't held high expectations. And when you come in and you invest with confidence, surround businesses with support, they're gonna succeed. And so we just believe that this kind of investment, inclusive investing is going to enable our communities, number one, to bounce out of COVID successfully because we're in a bit of a slump. Everybody is. We have to be looking at how do we get out of this and then soar? How do we take it to the moon afterwards? And we believe this kind of investing, inclusive investing is gonna be really important. Candace Bracken, how big is your portfolio now and what are you aiming for? Uh, right now we have six investments. Uh, we've made um, six investments since, since June, so deployed a few million dollars in capital. The goal is to have 35 companies in the portfolio and deploy the entire $50 million over the next three or four years. And how do people qualify for this? Who, who qualifies for this? Because there are a lot of people watching this right now, and when they hear figures like that, they say, me too, but who, who potentially is the me too? So we invest in five sectors. Uh, and so that's consumer packaged goods and services, e-commerce, sustainability, artificial intelligence, and healthcare. So that's on our investment side. But when we spoke a little bit earlier about programming, so we also offer programming to all entrepreneurs and we do provide assistance uh, to help them find working capital. So we've worked with companies that are coffee shops, soul food restaurants, uh, but we also have companies that are mobile dentistry companies. So uh, we have a, a large array, but specifically we invest in those five categories. Margaret and Candace, don't go away. I have a lot more questions. We'll be back with more from our business women in Detroit and Cincinnati right after this. What impact has COVID-19 had on you trying to do all the things that both of you are trying to do and how have you sort of had to reinvent what you're doing because of COVID-19? Margaret? Uh, I think COVID-19 has intensified our community commitment. I mean, certainly we saw the social determinants of health come front and center as we saw low-income communities, people of color affected on the front end of COVID very dramatically and in disproportion. So we had to step up our game in terms of community investment and paying attention 
to the health and welfare and, and making sure that our investments address those things. Um, but our goals for our company, our goals for our corporate citizenship, other than really probably reinforcing that they're the right goals, haven't changed. I and mean, it's really been an intensification of what we were already doing. Candace Bracken, how has it changed what you're doing or has it? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm lucky in the aspect that I met many of my LPs so before COVID. So we, we started this partnership with Delta Dental back in January or February. So um, really it's given us an opportunity and really this, in these intense moments to spend time on Zoom calls with our, with our current LPs. Um, on the programming side, you know, really we are doing a lot of things virtually. Uh, but it's giving our entire team some really intensely focused times to be prepared for 2021 uh, and, and rolling out some programming in your region. For the boot camp, the way it was originally set up was basically people, uh, these young entrepreneurs living with each other, um, you know, eat, drinking, all these things really getting close. Can you do that in COVID-19? Yeah, Numi is kind of like if the real world met road rules all of one, one house and really focused on tech. Um, as we roll out into 2021, um, we'll just make sure that we are as cautious as we can be around COVID and running programming um, in, in larger spaces and in hotel spaces, but we still will be offering programming as long as safety allows. Final question to both of you. Um, <clears throat> as you listen to all the different politicians of both parties uh, coming down the stretch here all year long. We've had partisan politics and they're trying to address what they say are the most important issues and they go to these various town hall meetings. Are they talking enough about business issues and what the future may hold for a country in which diversity is exploding? Yeah, I can start there if you don't mind. I, I believe that the local level um, is where big change happens. And so, yes, I do believe that um, both campaigns are attempting to listen, but work needs to happen at a grassroots level on the ground within our local areas. Um, and so change begins with us and we cannot wait for other people to come and bail us out. We have to forge our own paths. And in a real sense, is that sort of an extension of the Black Lives Matter movement and the essence of what we're talking about until there's more economic success? We're still going to be facing some of these inequities? I, I think that we, we have to forge our own path. And so um, we've chosen to, to take a stance and say that we matter um, because we do matter. And we will drive this home. And I know that there are plenty of allies out there the correct allies, not the ones that are causing trouble. Those aren't my allies. But there are a, there's a very strong contingent, and you can see them in lines across the country voting. Um, and, and so I do believe that, yes, that is exactly what's happening right now. And Margaret, what example do you think Delta Dental has set for other corporations around the country? You've been very successful in a city in which there's a majority minority. Well, I think you just have to look at who and what are the demographics in your community and be inclusive and representative of those people as you make decisions, as you come in to do business, as you seek prospects and reaffirm your relationships with your customers. You have to look around and understand your demographics. Um, we as a company are, are working very hard internally to be more representative of our regions. And we have some work to do. And we're about doing that. Um, I have been a lifelong Detroiter. It's not hard for me to look around and find community and to build community and to learn from our community. And perhaps that's the lesson of the, the movement. Listen and learn. There's a lot of white noise going on in our community from the politicians, from the streets. I, I think Candace really talked it the way it needs to be taught. We gotta, we gotta fix this ourselves. We have to look around and find our allies, link arms and do it locally. And isn't that the story of Detroit? When the nation wouldn't help Detroit, Detroit helped Detroit. When chains wouldn't come in and build restaurants in our communities, we built them on our own. We have a very gritty, very 
powerful local culture. And I see that that's what we're plugging into. And we're very savvy to what that is and who's driving it on at the trench level. And would both of you clearly say that you are true capitalists, uh, but doing social impact? I mean, I'm a capitalist at heart. I can say that, and it's in plenty of articles around the country, but um, I know that what I do makes an impact. Um, it'll impact lots of people for generations to come. Uh, we, are, we are changing lives of our founders, and um, I know that's happening every single day. Our company does an extraordinary job of balancing the, the monies that we bring in and the community investment that we give back. It's not a take, take, take world for us. It's a take and give back world. Margaret Trimmer, Candace Matthews Bracken from Cincinnati, thank you so much for joining us today on Spotlight. Stay safe to both of you. Thank you. Thank you, Chuck. And we'll be back in a moment with a preview of this week's Inside Michigan's African American Vote. And finally today, don't forget to watch week number eight of our ongoing Spotlight on the News series, Inside Michigan's African American Vote. Today, we'll spotlight the fight for the vote from black men. We'll talk to three prominent African American men, Michigan Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist II, Bishop Wayne T. Jackson, and Irvin Magic Johnson. I've been spending time um, really all year, but certainly for the last several weeks, making sure that people have everything they need to vote. That included leading a march of 200 black men uh, to the polls, to the Department of Elections. This election, we have so many safe voting options, and I wanna make sure that every Michigander exercises them. That's particularly important in the black community and communities of color that we step up and vote like we never voted before because there's so much at stake in this election. I feel that voting is sacred because so many people died, gave up their lives, were beaten, uh, dogs uh, attacked them for the right to vote. And it's important that 